working on a lot of projects with John for a number of years. Um, this is by far the biggest project we've ever worked on. Um, he happened to call me all the time. He happened to call me one day and said, Keith, I need to talk to you. And we went down to his studio and he said, this is what I want to do and this is where we are today. About 2015, 2016, uh, Johnny Lawrence was doing um, some concerts for the Ypsilanti High School and their athletic program and I was just learning how to do uh, photography so I sent him an email and asked him if I could come and shoot his concert. I didn't hear back from him right away but uh, a week later he contacted me via email and he said sure come on and take the pictures. I told him I said I just trying to learn my camera but any pictures that I take are yours and I just appreciate the opportunity. So I ended up taking the pictures, and then maybe a couple of months after that, he texted me and said that one of the guitar makers wanted to use a particular photo that I had taken uh, for an advertisement. And so he sent me the uh, waiver that I needed to sign, and um, that was my first time having uh, one of my pictures in print. Then after that, he called me. He said he was thinking about doing the uh, jazz uh, series at Riverside Park. And um, he said, would you like to come and take pictures? And I said, sure. He said, well, would you like to be the, uh, the official photographer for the concert series? And I said, sure, you know, I'll be honored. And that's how that started. How did I first become involved in the jazz series? The first year I came and I, I observed, then the second year I was recruited to come work in the house and work with the finance and the rest is history. I first became involved with the jazz series. It's been, this is our third year going. Um, work with the company Five Stones Digital uh, with my partner Brian Jones. And Brian actually reached out to Johnny Lawrence um, before, three years ago, um, when the series was in um, Riverside Park. And so then he made the connection and then asked, it, made sure that I was okay with it, told me Friday evening. So came out, did a little photography. We mainly live streamed, um, but I just made connections and talked with people and, you know, got, got a feel and interest for what people were looking for. And uh, that's pretty much where it started. And then every year has grown. The last two years, uh, being at Ford Lake Park has been wonderful. It's been a lot more people, a lot more vendors. So, you know, it's like a little family. So I'm kind of like all around. I help with the live streaming, help set it up, whatnot. But I've also taken some pictures, done some videography as well. And now we're uh, working to put together kind of a documentary of the summer. I work in the hospitality house where we provide meals for the guests and for the workers. So I usually get here early and I prepare the um, meals for all the people that work on the staff of the JEL. And we stay and we clean up and then I'm also on the finance team so if we collect any money I have to come back and count the money and make sure everything is 
done and the house cleaned up and all of that stuff. How do I help the series during the week? Well, first of all, I am the official photographer for the series, so I'm always taking pictures on Friday. But I also help wherever is needed, wherever a group is needed, a help is needed, then I you know, step in. And um, I worked closely with the house staff, and um, it was just really a blessing to me to be able to make sure that the staff was fed on the, uh, in the field. And um, they were very appreciative, our stagehands, you know, making sure that they were fed um, was really a blessing to me. And so also I use, do any type of administration, worked with uh, Brian Jones on that as well. And uh, anything that John asks me to do, I'm willing to do it to make sure that the uh, concert series is a success. So what about some of the things you do for the artists as far as, you know, the real choices or something like that? Yes, I do work with the house staff um, to ask the guest um, if they have certain allergies or if there are certain things that they like so that I can relay it to the house staff. Um, and that way we know that the uh, guests are comfortable, they don't have to worry about any um, allergens in the food. Um, they are comfortable eating what we prepare because we ask them directly. So that is another one of the things that I do. And so our uh, house staff, the um, chef that we had that was cooking this year, she made sure that there was plenty of food and that it was according to the standards of our guests. And um, the feedback had been great this year. the setup uh, for the cameras and the live streaming um, as well. And then I'll do more of the walking around with a handheld uh, camera. So it's not just the static three cameras, even though uh, the, one of the, the videographer has gotten more dynamic with one of his cameras. But this just allows me to go more into the crowd and help out there. Um, I've also helped our lovely uh, uh, photographer, official photographer, uh, take pictures at will um, when she had required requested me to excuse me so uh, I pretty much kind of like all purpose if you will. Now you mentioned going out into the crowd what is the feel that you have of the crowd when you shoot them? Ah, it, it is it's great because uh, I believe as mentioned before it's like a big family reunion and people are excited you know um, normally uh, being a photographer when you go out and you have the camera and people give you that weird look like what are you taking a picture of you'd be surprised how many people wave and just so happy and start dancing to the music and enjoying themselves so actually that's probably my one of my favorite things is going out into the crowd and with the camera taking pictures or video or whatnot uh, during the week uh we, uh, we go to a lot of meetings, um, we discuss a lot of contracts, make a lot of phone calls, uh, meet with a lot of people, um, but exactly for the Fridays is by far the busiest day for me. Uh, my day on Friday starts like about 9.15 in the morning. Uh, the stage gets here at 9.30. Uh, it takes them a few hours to set up. I have to stick around to make sure the banners are up on the stage. And shortly after that, the sound will come and in the middle of that, we have our, our people that stage our generator. They'll come for our power. So I have to make sure all these things are in place uh, to be ready for sound check. Sound check is at 3 p.m. Takes uh, the sound company about uh, two and a half hours to set up their speakers, lights, and the things they need. Um, I set up a hospitality tent. Uh, I make sure the area is clean. And uh, I just handle any issues or any problems that come up to make sure everything is set. Uh, for a sound check at 3 o'clock. Uh, 
I do a lot of walking. <laughs> uh, so uh, if there's issues that come up, I address those. If there's any problems, I have to address those. Uh, my main job, I guess, is to make sure the concert series runs smoothly, safely, and that everybody has a good time. Tell me, what does it take to break down the stage at the end of the year? What do you have to do in order for all of that to get done? Okay, uh, my day, like I said, starts about 9.15 in the morning with the stage. The concert is over at 7 p.m., I mean 9 p.m., uh, roughly about 9. And when everybody starts to exit, uh, we have to stay behind and make sure the stage is broken down, uh, the sound equipment is broke down, and the generator is taken away. So actually on Fridays, my day starts about 9.15 and it ends maybe about 11.30, 12 midnight. It's about the time that I get out of here. And I lock up, I make sure the park is locked up and everybody's out safely, and then I get to go home. That's about it. Uh, normally we have one, maybe two people breaking down the stage for the stage company. We have about four people breaking down the sound system. And there's only one person that comes to pick up the generator. Uh, during the process of taking down the stage, uh, halfway through, uh, myself and Brian Foley, who was the stage director, we will go up and we will take the banners off the stage. We have to collect the banners and they can continue taking the stage down. So uh, it's, uh, quite, it takes quite a few people to get it uh, where they can load things up and, and get the part clear. Uh, but I think my main job is to make sure that's done safely and everybody's out of the park and that the park is locked up uh, 11, 12, whatever time we have to get out at night. It is a, a stress-free environment. When people come out here, it seems like all the stresses they've had for the work week are gone. Uh, it's Friday, you know, let, let's have a good time. Let's listen to some great music. Um, and it's funny because you see people, I've personally seen people that I haven't seen in ages. Um, I'll see some of my friends or coworkers or colleagues um, people I go to church with, uh, saying they'll see other people like, you know, hey girl, how you doing? Oh, you know, and then they start talking. It is like a big, relaxing, fun environment. Uh, little kids running around, you know, um, every now and again, I bring my sons and they're just happy because they love food trucks, so they like to eat. So it is a great, relaxing, stress-free atmosphere. Well, from my perspective as a photographer and just seeing how this has evolved over the, this, this third year, I'm seeing such a atmosphere of community. I see the excitement coming in every Friday. The people are excited to be here. They want to be here. They, they have a level of expectation that the choices that we've made as a team are going to produce some of the greatest artists in the country and internationally to come. It is just growing by leaps and bounds. Um, I also see that people um, really resonate with us as we are out there, the video staff and the photography staff that's out there. They really are waving at us as we're coming you know, into our places. And it's just like a family. It is just such a family atmosphere and it's just such a good part of a Friday night to be able to come and relax. And you can just see people relaxing, laughing, talking, bringing their families, bringing their pets. Um, and I, I just love the atmosphere. And especially this year, it was just so special. It just seemed like it was something different this year that um, just permeated the atmosphere. Now you're also involved with social media as well, so 
So what types of um, interactions have you had with audience members or what type of um, feedback have you received there? Yes, so I um, also am responsible for putting all of the pictures that I take on our Facebook, the JEL Facebook page. And um, I just have had such a great response for the people that are out there. Matter of fact, when I go in the audience to take the pictures, they say, we're going to look for our pictures. Or I'll tell them, look for your picture on the Facebook page. It's out there. Um, I'm also finding that even when I've gone to other venues, and taking pictures at other concerts that people recognize. They'll come up to me and they'll say, I know you, you're from the Johnny Lawrence concert series. And you know, really my telltale sign is all of this white hair, but they're like, I know you, you know, you know, I know you, I've seen you. And I've had people even come up to me that I never even knew, even in church, churches I'd never been in before. And they're like, we know you from the Johnny Lawrence concert series. And so it just gives me, um, perspective on how large this is and how we always are representing the Johnny Lawrence Concert Series wherever we go and we have to always have a positive attitude because we never know who's been watching us throughout these jazz series and so on social media people will come and they'll tell me you know we love this or how about this can you bring this person and it's just such an excitement that I'm seeing expressed on our social media or through social media. I think our jazz series has a, a huge impact on the audience. To me, it's like a, a family event. Uh, you see seniors, you see people with families, you see kids. Uh, what amazes me the most is every week is like a family reunion. Uh, people haven't seen each other in years. It's like a high school reunion. and um, The atmosphere is just like, a, it's like family. Now, what about the sponsors? I know they also participate in the system. We have some great sponsors. We have some sponsors that uh, started off back when we were at Riverside. Uh, they're still with us today. Uh, they support the concert 100%. Uh, so they also, besides supporting the concert, they also set up boots and come out here and you know promote their businesses. Um, so they've been very supportive of the John Lawrence Summer Jazz Series. Yes, we have so many wonderful sponsors that have helped with bringing this to fruition. And they are not only just sponsors with their finances, which we are so grateful for, but they're also here on Friday. They're also participating in the experience. They're lined up and they're open. And when we go to their booths and we, even when I take pictures, you know, they're, they're just ready and accepting of the people that are around them. We just have some wonderful sponsors and we are so grateful for them. And we thank God for them really to be partnering with us to bring this to pass. And so I've just heard so many great things. I've seen them, I've observed them, and our sponsors are just spot on in terms of the way that they deal with the people that come every Friday night. I think the Jazz Series helps people in the community come together. Every Friday night for 10 weeks they're coming together and it promotes community and unity among the people. say it just made me feel really good to see the people from Ypsilanti. I'm from Ypsilanti, I don't live here anymore, and it made me feel good to see all the people come together from different areas, mainly from Ypsilanti and then surrounding areas come together in harmony and just enjoy some good jazz music with um, John Lawrence being from Ypsilanti too. It makes me feel good that somebody in my community that I was born and raised and is doing positive things in the area. Uh, the lovely thing about this, and I think it really was spotlighted this year, is the fact that um, more and more people are, are realizing that even if they can't make the concert physically, they can still participate and still listen to the great music, the artists that are coming 
uh, via Johnny Lawrence's uh, YouTube page. So we've had um, people watching from all over the world, not just all over uh, Michigan, but we've had you know different parts of the country in California, Georgia, Florida, but as well as Japan and um, I know there are certain countries in Africa as well that have have looked at it and watched it and our views have gone up every single year so that is a great impact. Can you give us something that we would never know happens? Ooh. You know what it's kind of like my favorite analogy is when people talk about ducks on the pond because when people come to the concert on Friday evenings, by the time they get here, even the people that are showing up early, the most they might see for the most part are the sound checks and the, the band getting ready and the artists, you know, testing their instruments out and sound and everything. They don't realize, and this is a testament to this one, to the wonderful team that I'm a part of, is how chaotic it can be because everybody's off doing everything, you know, helping out with the food, helping out with, you know, crowd control, parking, uh, setting up wires, doing mic checks, problem solving left and right. Um, but it's all very smooth because the crowd does not see it. They just see us out taking pictures, having fun, because we get there, we enjoy the music too. We're not just out here just because. So we're out dancing, jamming, like, oh, that's my song. And then, oh yeah, click, click, taking a picture or two. So it's a, it's a wonderful experience, but really it's, Everybody on the team is working so hard, but they make it look so easy. And that is like a beautiful thing. So you have the unique perspective of seeing every concert from behind the stage. What was your favorite experience this summer? My favorite experience had to be, I don't know, just, just talking to the artist. Because, like you said, our, our tent headquarters, if you will, is located directly behind the stage. So artists, before they go on, they're kind of right next to us. And when they come off, they, they're kind of right there, getting the water, getting their towel, cooling down. Um, even in between, in little breaks uh, between their sets. So they're kind of there relaxing. So just talking to them, getting to know them. And I know people, it's kind of cliche to say this, but you know they're just regular people too. So they're just having jokes, this and the other. Um, one of the, the greatest things I've ever seen, um, cause it was at the last show, cause it had to be a double show because the next to the last show got stormed out cause we had really bad flood, um, rain and flood uh, that weekend. So we didn't have the concert. So one artist was up there with his band and the drummer who was playing and his drum tipped over. I don't know what happened, if it got kicked or whatnot. And then another drummer, uh, just from, that was with another band, all of a sudden he knew, recognized what happened and ran on stage and was so slick about it, picked up the drum, put it back, helped get in position because I used to play percussion as well. So, you know, you gotta have things in a certain area for your liking, it's kind of like driving a car. Your seat has to be in a particular position for you to be comfortable. This drummer made sure everything was all right. Um, made sure the drum was good. It picked up his, his other drumstick that fell. And you would never have known that it happened. But because I was behind the stage, I actually saw when it rushed up, I was like, ooh, what happened? But it was just real smooth how they did it. He went off the stage. The crowd never knew what was going on. They heard the music the whole time. So it was a beautiful thing. And so finally, what are you expecting? Oh man, so it grows every year. Um, this is, like I said, this is the third year that we've done it. Um, and it has grown every year. But I think between last year and now this year, it grew exponentially. It, like, it more than doubled in terms of crowd participation, uh, crowd awareness every single week. It was huge. So. Um, I can just see that this concert is going to keep growing and more and more people are going to be there uh, and the word is going to get out and people are going to want to just be part of it. So. Well, I think um, one major thing that we did this year, uh, last year we had a small area for our seniors uh, for handicapped parking. Uh, we doubled that this year. Uh, we try to 
uh, adjust things as they go because we learn every year a little something a little different. Uh, but this year what surprised me is the growth of the Jazz Series. Well, I mean, I knew it would grow, but not this fast. And in fact, we're growing so fast that, you know, when I get information about people listening to us in Japan and Portugal, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. So, what about next year? What are you looking forward to next year? Next year, I expect uh, it to be the same or much better. <laughs> Uh, I think it's going to continue to grow, uh, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, we have a staff of about 18 or 20 team members. We have a great staff. Uh, we get so many compliments from our artists, uh, from our uh, community, community, excuse me, from our community, uh, and from our sponsors. Everybody's treated well, everybody's respected, and we get that type of feedback, but we couldn't do it without our team members. And I know if John was here, he would echo what I'm saying. We have a well-oiled machine, and I appreciate it. I just felt like this year, being the third year, it just seemed that we were cooking with gas. And what I mean by that is just like everything was working together. Um, I really saw more engagement with our artists. It um, really behooves us as the Johnny Lawrence team to keep doing what we're doing in terms of how we treat people. You know, our motto is we want to be, we want to treat people the way we want to be treated. We want to do that with every concert goer. We want to do that with everybody that participates, every artist that comes in. We want them to feel at home. I've had so many of the artists come to me and tell me how happy they were to be here, how they were treated while they were here and how grateful they were to be a part of this experience and how much they just love John for his openness, how he does business in terms of the musical side of it. They just feel like this is a atmosphere that they want to come back and there, many of the artists want to come back and um, they're looking forward to being asked back and you know I was uh, actually talking to one of the artists that had come um, he wasn't here this year, but he had come last year and he stated, anytime John wants me on that stage, I'm going to be there because of the way you guys treat us as family. So I think that we're doing what we want to do in terms of treating our neighbors and the artists are our neighbors and we're doing what we can to treat them to the point that they want to come back here. And um, I'm looking forward to the next year. On behalf of the Johnny Lawrence Summer Jazz Concert Series Team 2023, we would like to thank y'all for allowing us to entertain you. See you next year. We out of out of here. Peace and thank you. Thank <laughs> you.